All right, let's get started. We're going to build a tic-tac-toe game, and then we're going to build part one of a text view or tab view controller or something. I don't know. We're gonna, <laughs> we'll, let's see how far we get through the tic-tac-toe game. That's the focus for tonight. You may use all of the tic-tac-toe game for the assignment that is due. And I will tell you the tic-tac-toe game that I'm going to build is going to have some bugs in it. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll probably want to fix the bugs. And you'll probably want to change the, the UI around a little bit, and, you know, kind of do some different stuff to it. So if you are not familiar yet, behacker.com, if you click on the iOS application development link, let me go back to the beginning, it's the second one down, iOS application development. And if you go all the way down to the bottom for the example projects, in the example projects section, towards the bottom, there's three files for this one because we have images. This is a tic-tac-toe game that uses image, image views. And uh, there's one image, well, there's three of them total. There's a backboard, there's an X, and then there's an O. And uh, so here's the game tutorial that we're going to go through, the images, and then the solution. So I'm going to run it so you see what the thing looks like. So we have a visual aid in terms of what the functionality is going to be. And then we'll run through the steps, and we'll make it work, hopefully. The other one is the table view part one tutorial. So if you want to download this one as well, if we get through and we're still alive at the end of Tic-Tac-Toe, then we'll do the table view one next. I'm sure we'll be alive. It's a fun project, actually. Making games is usually pretty fun. Uh, so let's see. Oh, yes. I was saying that I'm going to run the program for you so you see the nifty little Tic-Tac-Toe game. And I'll point out the problem, one of the problems, actually. So if I run it in an iPhone simulator... The finished product, this is where we're getting to. You don't have to. If you want to run it right now, you can. If, if you don't want to run it and you want to build it yourself, you can run through the tutorial. No, you don't have to run it. Yeah. And I would download the uh, files, the image files, and the PDF file. So here it is here, a little game. It kind of looks, you know, not so good. The only thing that really shows is the board. When you click on the spaces, you see I got an X, and I got a no, and I got an X, I got a no, got an X. But let's say I want to, let's say, you know, I want to click again. It takes multiple clicks. <laughs> this is a bug. So usually when you play a, when you play tic-tac-toe, you're not supposed to uh, be able to select again. So I didn't think about that. That's not, That hasn't been implemented. When the uh, person wins, it puts up a little thing. Um, I've seen variations of this that uh, can play, Ooh, you won! Or change a label says you won. I just put it up in alert view because I was kind of sloppy about it. I also cleared the board. So there's a reset button here as well, reset game. The but There's a label down here on the bottom that says uh, it is zero turn, it is X turn, it is zero turn, it is X turn. turn switches the turns back and forth. So that's what we're building. And again, you may use and reuse all of this stuff if you want for your assignment, because you have to build a tic-tac-toe game on your assignment. And in fact, if you want, you can you know, um, be adventurous and add sound if you want, or add um, any type of uh, feedback. And you can fix that little bug if you want. So, so let's get started. I'm going to open up the PDF file. And I'm going to create a single view application project and call it tic tac toe. Yes. Can we um, attach a database with this game to uh, add the scores of the and every time X wins or every time O wins? You can. And if you were here, um, if you were here last yeah. two weeks ago, you could use um, you can use a database, SQL database for it if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, so you can keep track of how many um, times. The person's lost in one. Yeah, yeah that would be perfect, actually. Or you could use Core Data. You do it that way, too, with Core Data. You don't have to use a big database for it. So, or you could put in a text file. We're going to look at preference files tonight as well, plist files, actually, tonight, if we get through Tic-Tac-Toe, which I think we probably will. So going pretty fast. All right, so go ahead and open up X Xcode for those people who have Xcode installed. I'm going to clear this thing out because it's, like, too cluttered for me. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Uh, create a new application. This time we're going to create a single view application. Let me just make sure I've got the instructions here correct. Single view application. Call it Tic-Tac-Toe or another title of your choice. You can create an iPhone, an iPad, or a Universal. I'm going to create an iPhone application, actually. 
because it's a little easier for me to test. I like the iPhone application. And I'm going to call this one a Tic Tac. Tic Tac. There we go. I get to call it Tic Tac Toe if you want. Uh, don't use the storyboard. We don't really need it for this game. We just have one interface. And I go ahead and click on Next. And I'm going to put it uh, on the desktop. So now I have my open file, and the uh, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, if you downloaded, if you go to this URL here, in fact I have to do it because I didn't do it actually. If you go back here where I told you to download stuff, um, iOS programming, Xcode, uh, let's see, example projects, we got a tic-tac-toe game images, it's a zip file. I'm going to go ahead and download that one too. And then uh, I'm going to put the images in the project by dragging and dropping them in. So I'm going to um, re you know, make some room here. Here's that file I just downloaded. It's called TTT Images. If I open it up, I see I've got my X, my O, and my board. You can easily replace this with other size images and different. You can change the board, change the X's and the O's. I'm just, in fact, if you go online, there's a ton of images out there for tic tac toe. Everybody wants to create a tic tac toe game for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's a um, nice, easy project to start with. Who knows? So, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to take them from here. This is the downloaded folder. And I'm going to drag them and stick them in here. So, and I'm going to copy them in because I don't want to replace. So, I'm going to take this guy here and I'm dragging it to the folder. It doesn't really matter where you drag it in the project, but what you want to do is make sure you have copy items into destination groups folder selected. This will copy it in instead of using the original reference. If you use the original reference and then you move them and delete them, there goes your files. <laughs> so, it's a lot safer just to copy them in. So, do it with all three images to we have our images in the game. I'm just dragging them into the to the main folder here, and I'm making sure it says copy. So I've got my three images in the project, and I've got so I see I have an X, I have an O, and I have the board. So it's kind of a plain looking board, but it's okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to my directions. So the game will work by touching a square on the game board, as we've seen already, and we'll place an X or a zero depending upon whose turn it is. So we'll uh, check for a winner after the user places the mark on the board. And then if there is no winner, then we will update the text label to say that it has uh, the next person's turn. So we stop when there's a winner. And we'll also create a button for the user to reset the game. So copy the supplied images into the project. Create the user interface. This is the hardest part, actually. It's not too bad. Open up the XIB file or the main storyboard by double-clicking on it. We're going to drag the UI image view to the window and then resize it to so that it's approximately 300 by 300. And then set the image to the board. We're going to put the board on first because we're going to put it underneath. We can actually switch the order if we don't want to do it this way, but it's kind of easier just to start out this way. So I'm going to click on the XIB file, which I've got right here. We want an image view. So I'm going to type in image, and I get image view that shows up. And I'm going to drag it over to the canvas. I'm not going to make it fill up the whole thing. See, I have options when I drag it over. So I'm just going to stick it right here. Actually, I want to stick it inside. This is not inside. I'm going to stick it inside the view. If it didn't go inside the view, it should have gone inside the view. There we go. And I stuck it inside the view. I can drag it this way. What I did is I opened up the placeholder uh, on the left-hand side, and I just dragged it into the view. You would definitely want it in the view, but you want it to be 300 by 300, I believe. So if I start moving it, I see, I see the W and the H get bigger. It's kind of a slow way of doing it, but... I prefer to do it this way. So you can change the properties over in the right hand column if you wanted to. 
in the attribute inspector. Okay, I got 300 for one. Let's go the other one down, 300. It doesn't have to be exact. If you make it 300 by 300, it'll fit the board correctly, and the pieces will look like they're supposed to. Uh, but you can actually change the you can change the whole thing if you wanted to. Let's see. Ah, I got it. 300 by 300. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stick it right here. Actually, if I wanted to, I'm going to change the background color, make this one a little different than the other one I did. There we go. So now I'm going to have a white board on a green background for mine. So, All right, so that's where my board is going to stick. But my board image isn't here yet, so i got to put my board image on here. So on the right-hand side over here, I'm going to select the image. That's why I put the images in there already, because I want the board. So select the board for the image, which should be in the project already. If it doesn't show up here, that means it's not in the project. So you should have that so far. Now we're going to stick one, two, three, four, five, nine more image views on here because we need images that are going to show up for all of the different things. But we don't have to attach any images to it because we're going to do it programmatically when the user clicks on the image. So we're going to take the events and work with it. But instead of doing it one, two, three, we're just going to put one and set it up, cut and paste it. So drag another image view over. Little guy here. And it uh, doesn't really matter what you size it as because we can resize it. Actually, you can stick it in here and resize it if we want to. Here, I'll resize it so it fits in the little space. That one looks pretty good. Over here on the right-hand side, select User Interaction Enabled. <coughs> what this means is that by default it's turned off. If you turn on the User Interaction, when the user clicks on it, hovers over it, does touches it, long drags on it, does something to it, <laughs> it'll pick up the events. Uh, so let me make sure I'm following my instructions correctly. I don't believe I gave... Oh, I did a 100 by 100 is the size of the little piece if you're using these images. Um, so drag the UI image view. We did that 300 by 300. Drag another one over, call it to so 100 by 100. Check the box for user interaction enabled. See the screenshot below. Here's the screenshot below. It's got this one here. So I'm going to go ahead. This is that button here you wanted to press. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to 100 by 100. Oh, I was actually kind of close. It was uh, 100 by 100. There we go. Now I can click on it. Are we good so far, or should I slow down? The, the image yeah. view. How do you how do you get the image view? Uh, oh, um, you implement? you drag it over. Yeah, I've got it. Uh, I've got both, like this. Yeah, I've got them both dragged over, but I don't have the window that says image view. Okay. Let's see. Um, you are missing. <coughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, your attribute. So I just want to say, you had it on the wrong. You wanted to beat it on. If you hover your line on the yeah. process, it shows the attribute. Okay. That's where you're going to put the image on there. If you're not seeing what. If you're not seeing what I'm seeing up here, it means you haven't clicked on the right section of the side panel. So that's attribute inspector is what we want. Um, the rest of it we can check it has different properties for different things, so connections and stuff like that. Okay, um, so now we're ready to cut and paste to do it because I'm not going to do this for the entire time. So instead, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to copy, not cut, but I'm going to copy it. <coughs> And now I'm going to paste it, so I'm going to go paste, edit, paste, and drag them into the little spaces. There's one, <laughs> paste, two. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what order you put them in because we haven't wired them yet. Just fill up the board. Actually, I can stick this guy in here. You can use the original too. They're all the same. They're just empty image views of 100 by 100. Paste. There we go. Paste. Edit. Paste. <laughs> All right. I think I've done a lot of cutting and pasting. I'm good. Which image? Oh, it was the 100 by 100 image view. 
empty. Empty. Yeah, don't put an image in because we're going to do it programmatically. It's going to hold either an X or it's going to hold a zero, depending upon uh, which user is pressing the pressing the, the square. All right. I don't know why I have a black kind of weird line going on there. Let's see. Uh, now I got rid of the line here. Okay, I accidentally moved mine up a little bit. There we go. Okay, there's a little feature of this that might get in your way when you start doing stuff. And it's right over here on the right-hand side where it says auto resize subviews. And then there's auto resizing of views. So don't be concerned if this whole thing gets messed up on you. In fact, if I run it right now, I can't really tell because I don't have any images in it. I'm not going to be really tell what's going on with this thing until I run it after we start populating it. So don't be concerned if everything got auto resized incorrectly. Um, but um, actually, let me see. Okay, we're good. I'm just going to leave it on the defaults right now. So now I'm going to uh, put a label. So I'm going to drag a label. So I'm typing in label on the bottom. And I'm going to put the label right here-ish. I'll put it right here. And this is going to show me my uh, user outputs, what, uh, you know, whose turn it is, stuff like that. And I'm also going to drag a button on here, too. So I'm going to go up button. I'm going to take a round rectangular button. And on the button, I can type in uh, restart or reset. I'll just put here restart. Restart. To restart the game. You can get fancy, you know, you can put an image on the button. You guys should know how to put an image on the button, so, at this point. Um, I'm going to make my uh, label a little bit bigger, because I'm going to programmatically um, populate it. So, I'm making sure that's big enough to hold whatever it is I'm going to stick in there. Now, if I run it to sort of test it out, let me put it back on an iPhone simulator, take it off of my iOS device. I'm going to see what kind of trouble I'm in in terms of the auto arranging. <laughs> Just because I'm kind of curious at this point. I'm going to run it, make sure everything works correctly. At this point, everything should run for you. You should be able to see the GUI. If you're not seeing the GUI, you've got some problems. Quit right now, start fresh. So I always test it as soon as I build the GUI. Not so bad. The label's way up inside of the board. Not such a good thing. And the button's on the bottom. So I'm going to exit out of here. I'm actually going to just do a cheat sheet method and line it up towards the bottom. <laughs> that way I don't have to worry about it. Align it towards the bottom. So when it auto adjusts, it'll move up a little bit, but it'll move up in relationship to the bottom instead of the top, which means it'll come up. It'll come up lower. Why is this feature good? Not because I keep complaining about this feature. Because we have different size phones. Some long ones, some short ones. You know, and now. It's a little bit, see now it looks pretty good. See now it looked a little buggy before because it was all aligned towards the top. And this is a big one. This guy here is the iPhone 6.1. This is a smaller phone. This screen is not as big as this screen is. <laughs> so it's going to auto adjust. If you take the non auto adjust off, auto resize, auto adjust, there's two features actually, there's auto resize, auto adjust. If you take those attributes off and disable them and don't work with this this way, when you load it, it's going to look funny on some devices. What if I loaded this up on my iPad? You know, it, might look, it may not look so good. At least I'm guaranteed it's going to look <coughs> appropriate for the device. It's just that you know this device here is bigger than this device. So the screen is auto adjusting. Yeah, it's moving it up for me. Like, great. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's doing it in relationship with the other components that are on there. So long story short, that's one of the biggest hassles, I believe, of this current version. Never used to be a problem. It's come out to be an extremely irritating problem for me personally because I always want to like have things perfect. Yes? Is this It's in the configuration of this window here. So we can auto resize the sub views inside of the view. We can also auto adjust the components. And there's another um, there is another setting, and I'm looking for it right now. Actually, there's this one here. There's also one on the auto layout. Use auto layout. This is the culprit right here. <laughs> well, I had to click on the um, left hand the file inspector. Click on the window, click on the file, and this is the big guy right here. You take this guy off, nothing's going to auto-adjust anymore, and this will look perfect. Actually, if I take it off right now, 
move the label back up where I wanted it, and then run it, it's going to look fine because it's not going to auto size anything on my layout. Only problem is, it's not going to work when I want it to. <laughs> when I don't know what I want it to, like when I'm loading it on a big phone or a small phone, it's not going to auto adjust the layout. See now it looks pretty. Now it looks exactly in proportion to how I put it. So that's that's the fix to the problem. If you're curious, otherwise I recommend working around it. I recommend not turning that off, because then you're not going to use the feature. And hopefully in the next version of uh, next version of Xcode we'll have a better we'll have a better implementation of that feature. I'm hoping, because that's kind of buggy in my opinion. Okay, so let's go back to the code. And uh, I'm going to put this back on the, I'm going to put this back on the, because I just like, to, I like it over here in that setting. But I'm going to click on the uh, tuxedo over here. So I got my, and I'm going to get rid of the side panel piece over here so I've got more real estate to look at. Now I've got to wire all of these components to the uh, .h file. So I'm going to check my names in here because of the implementations of the methods. So we cut and pasted the eight more times, and we moved the boxes, so we hovered over the spaces of the game board, lined them up, finished the game board, looks like this. <coughs> yeah, our game board sort of looks like that. And we dragged a UI label over there, we did that. So we dragged a UI button over there, like that. Now I guess something looks like this. Yep, mine actually kind of looks like that, too. Okay. Now we're going to wire the components to the... Uh, ViewController.h, but we also have some other components that we're going to need. So first I'm going to add two IAB outlets to be used by the UI images and one NS integer to keep track of whose turn it is. So I'm going to cut and paste these three data components and talk about them in a few minutes here, but I'm going to copy them from the PDF file here. I'm going to stick them and I'm in my ViewController.h file and I'm putting in an opening bracket and then a closing bracket up here at the top and I'm pasting that in here and what did I just paste in? Let's take a look here. Let's get rid of this one here. Get rid of this one. Now if you've been using this for a while and you've been programmatically dragging and dropping and wiring you're a little irritated right now because you got these two things and are not connected to anything. And you're wondering, how am I going to connect them? We well, don't have to connect them. We're going to do it through the source code. So we're not connecting the X's and the zeros. Common mistake is people are going to want to like try and connect this to something. Just leave it alone. What do we do? We created for those people in the iOS class, in the uh, um, Objective C class. You know this already. For the people in this class who maybe not taking the Objective C class, you just declare three variables. <laughs> so you've got an NS integer that's standing for a player token, a turn or token player turn. Maybe I could have called it, probably should have called it turn, but I will just leave it at player token. Basically it's an integer is going to be 0 or 1, or 1 or 2. I think it's actually going to be 1 or 2. Because we have player 1, player 2, it's easier than doing characters and going x and 0. So it's just going to keep track of whose turn it is. So if it's 2, we're going to switch it to 1. If it's 1, we're going to switch it to 2, back and forth. And then here we're keeping track of the images. So we have two UI IAB outlets that are going to be UI images. And the images are going to be an O image and an X image. Could have called them anything we wanted to. Could have called them O and X, but, you know, just naming them. They're going to be equal to these guys out here, eventually. So as long as we have a UI image, we can have it equal to a UI image. It's an image. So, Okay, so now let's go back to the code and see what we're supposed to do with the wiring. Finished code looks like this. We have uh, our three items in there. Very good. So now we're going to wire the board, the label, and the buttons. Do we really need the board? I don't even need the board. Hmm. Probably can get away without doing the board. We definitely need the image board. Excuse me, we need to know whose turn. We need the reset button. So let's do the easy stuff. Let's do the label and the button first. The button, we're going to call it reset button. And we're going to take the touch up inside method. How about that? So we're going to go, let's do the button first. So click 
on the button, right mouse click to bring up the little menu here. Drag the touch up inside, touch up inside, or touch down, or any one of those events that you could possibly want. Press down the control button, put it in underneath. See, we want it underneath the opening and closing bracket here. Okay, and this one's going to be called reset button. So let's call it re reset button. And I'm changing the type to UI button. So it's a touch up inside uh, reset button. We've done this many times already. So, but now people are paying attention because you can actually use this for one of your assignments. So, <laughs> some people are doing this for the first time as well. All right, so <laughs> reset button. We've just created an IB outlet. Or excuse me, an IB action. We want to create an IB outlet for the label. So we're just going to, actually, we're going to do a property for the label. So I clicked on the label, I'm pressing down the control button. I'm going to put it above the IB action. And what's this one going to be called? This one's going to be called Whose Turn. Actually, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this here because I'm terrible with uh, typing. So paste. Now it's called Whose Turn, and it's a UI label, and it's now a property. So I'm going to go ahead and press connect. So now we know if we hover this over, we can see that these two are connected. I don't like the length of this one. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. Just in case I get a little wordy with my descriptions. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the PDF file here and see um, we could do uh, the board. Yeah, let's do the board. I don't. Oh, yeah, actually, we need the board. Do we need the board? We can clear the board out. So, well, let's just do the board because it's here. I don't think we're going to use the board for anything, though. But let me just wire it anyway. How are we going to get to the board? We have this beautiful setting going on. Well, here's the problem. Can't get to the board. It's all covered up. Oh, we got to the board. You can go do this until you get to the board. Or you can do what I like to do, is just move one down and then click on the board. <laughs> the board's going to be a property as well. So I'm going to put it right in underneath the other property. So I'm going to control drag it down here. I'm going to call it board. UI image view. Yes, OK. We're very good. Press OK. You can select the one the viewer. I'm sorry? You can go to viewer and uh, then you can click the image and yeah. What do you mean? The view. The view. Oh, you mean over here? Objects, right? Yeah, you could. Yeah, actually, he made a good point. You could just select the board <laughs> this way. You could do that. I'm kind of lazy. I don't know. I don't like to. Oops, now I'm moving the label. You, you know, know what? There's like half a dozen different ways you can do that. Okay. Pick whatever way you feel is the most appropriate for your style of. Of whatever. Okay. I like to use a mouse too, so <laughs> I'm a little odd. Oh, actually, you have a mouse too. That's good. Yeah, I'd love to use a third, three button mouse, or this is a two button mouse, but yeah. I hate the, the touchpad. All right. Because I can never, like, it's too much work to touch the touchpad. All right, so now, next we're going to wire all eight of the buttons to UI image view IB outlets label we have to do them all separately remember with a calculator program we took all the numbers and we wired it to one and we took all that was great because they were all used together all the functionality but how do we know when someone clicks on one of the images if they're an X or an O we could we could wire them all together and then do an array with it a little bit harder so this is a bit redundant to wire them to IB Outlet image views, but it's easier. It's easier abstractly. More code, though, because we have to do this eight times. But to simplify the concept, we're going to call it S1 through S8. So the finished code looks like this with S1 through S8. So go ahead and drag and drop over the IB Outlet and call it, is it, we're going to create properties. So I'm going to stick all my properties together. I'm going to stick the properties above. I think I'll put them above here, actually. So I'm going to systematically go through, and this is, again, probably a better way of doing it. But I'm going to press the control button, and here's number one, <laughs> S1. 
<laughs> now I'm going to do number two. <laughs> yes, two. Um, yeah, nine of them. Three by three. Three. <laughs> it doesn't really matter which one's which one. Um, actually, no, it doesn't matter. We can just do them systematically, one left to right. So one, two, three, this is number four, so this is number five coming up. S, five. If you call them S1 through 9, they'll match the code and you won't have to retype anything. So 6, let's see, S6, 7, eight. Nine. Okay, we're good. I'll give you. I'll talk for a few minutes while you guys catch up. Then, <laughs> most people haven't finished yet. So next, we're gonna add the IB action to trigger the touchdown event on the UI button. That's the easy one. That's the reset button. Um, call the event. Oh, wait, we already did that one. We actually we did the reset button. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I did the label and the reset button first. I did the label, the label, the board, and the reset button. We already did. So make sure we got that, which is we should have it already. So let's see. <coughs> we're going to need to add the three new method prototypes that we're going to implement ourselves. This, again, takes a, there's a reset board method that gets run by the reset board button. Not directly linked to the button. It's in fact the button's going to call self set board reset board. Not done. Not not the most efficient. However, it's done this way because then we can change the method, and then we can have the method called by other methods if we want to run it. So if you have the activity, then what I'm explaining is why 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 move out? Why create another method? for something that's going to be run from a button touch. When we can just put it in the IB action for that button touch. It's because if you put it outside of that button touch, you can call it again and again and again, and it works more uh, generically. And it's just going to reset the board. So you figure it's kind of behavior you're going to want to stick outside of the button. Because then we can reset the board when a person wins, which is what we're going to do. So that's why we're creating a separate method for that. So I'm going to copy these guys here. These are the method prototypes for three new methods that we're going to create, and we're going to stick them in here. Um, and I'm going to stick them on the bottom <coughs> underneath my reset button. So it doesn't really matter where you stick them. And my code uh, word wrapped so I'm going to put them on separate lines. So I'm still in my viewcontroller.h file. I've added three new prototypes, method prototypes. One's called update player info, reset board, and check for win, which is basically all the behavior that we're going to do. You can have another one that says play sound or another one that says, um, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so I believe that at this point we're done with the view controller. Dot H. Now we're going to open up the view controller. Oh, there's a typo. It's not tic tac toe. View controller.m and then type in the following code. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to initialize the data <laughs> for the board for the game. We're going to look at the view did load method, which loads initially. We're going to assign the O image to the O.png. So this is the default step that was already in the method up here. So what are we going to do? We're going to, you can copy and paste and put this into the project, and I'll do it in a few minutes, but it's bigger here, so I'll just talk about it here. In the viewcontroller.h, we made those two images, their image views, and we called it o, L, o image and x image. So now we're going to say UI image, image named this. And so we're pulling, and we're assigning 
from a method call that says image named, and then we have o.png and x.png, where there are two images. So these are the parameters that are being sent to the method call to assign the image name, and we're creating UI images objects, and we're assigning it to the UI image object that we have. So on the UI image object, we are pulling the the names of these files. And the names of the files are uh, two images that are located inside of the project because these are the ones that we added in there already. Then we're going to set the player to player number one. So play token is going to be equal to one. And then we're going to update the label so that whose turn is going to be equal to x goes first or whatever we want. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code in. I'm actually going to just take, because I don't really need the super view did load. I'm just going to take this stuff here. You could copy and replace the entire method if you want to. So I'm going to go to Xcode. I'm going to switch it over to the .m file. Um, if you just came in, we're doing the tic-tac-toe game <laughs> that is in. Here, I'll just show because you're not the only one who just showed up. There's a couple of other people who showed up as well. It's tic-tac-toe game tutorial images and solution that is in the um, um, iOS application development subfolder. It's in, uh, I believe it's in example projects. So if you go into example, iOS application development, example projects, for anyone who has come in since I started this, example projects, it's down here. These are the files we're working with. We're running through a tic-tac-toe game. And we just finished the user interface. All right, so now we're in the .m, and I'm going to go and find here the view did load. I'm going to remove this little comment so I have room to stick my stuff in underneath. And what am I going to stick in here? I'm going to paste in here. And it worked. Good. Cutting and pasting always doesn't. So... Uh, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just take a look here. That is part of the comment. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> no, no, it's not part of the comment. Uh, hold on. Yeah, let's just take a look here. Oh, we didn't synthesize. We did not synthesize the um, whose turn. So it was going to need an underscore. So let me take a look here. I need to fix that, actually, in the next time I run it. This is not part of the uh, Instead, if we put the underscore in and the problem goes away, we could fix that problem up here. In fact, I'm going to do it so I don't have to do it again. I'm going to remove that little interface so I don't need it. If we add an at synthesize and we put in whose turn, then we're going to get an error message down here, but this one's going to go away when I take the underscore off. So it's a good example of what happens when we... Uh, don't synthesize. You just put the underscore in. Does it really matter one way or the other? It's just accomplishing the same thing. So now I'm going to take a look at my .h file and see if there's anything else in here I want to synthesize. Um, the label. Yeah, we'll see what happens when we go. We'll just add it as we go. So I think we're probably actually pretty good without that. Just putting that in there. We'll see. We can actually just automatically synthesize all of those properties if we wanted to. But we'll just leave it alone. We'll live on the edge here. So everybody, I hope, understands what we've just done. We've set the two images to equal to the two images, the X's and the O's. And we set the player to equal one. We don't have to synthesize the player token because I believe he's an NS integer. And we're not actually trying to get or set anything. We're not trying to, this is setting the text, which is why we had to do it. So if you want to run a set or a get method <coughs> inadvertently, inexplicit, explicitly or inexplicitly on the data member, you have to synthesize it in order to have those members available to you. If you're just assigning it a value, like an NS integer, you don't have to do that at all. And I believe this one is an NS integer. It is. And we don't have to synthesize that, actually, because we're not going to run it. Well, we probably will eventually, but we'll see what happens. We'll wait until we get an error message. Okay, so we added it now so that when the game loads up, we've assigned the X's and the O's, and we set this to X goes first. Well, I'm going to change this to X will start the game, because I gave myself more room on my label. So 
makes it a little bit more self-explanatory. So now we're going to add the method to update the player info, and then we're going to call this method from um, other methods. So this is the one here that we've added to it, and uh, it's called player update player info. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put it below the method that I just. Uh, let's see, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it on the bottom actually. Mm, I'm going to put it right above reset button. So make sure you're in the .m file. And I am pasting it in. So let me talk about this method for a little bit. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, actually, we always set the integer. We're not getting any properties from it, so <laughs> which is interesting. We're just checking to see if it's equal to something. Update player info. So what have we got? If the player token is equal to 1, so we're doing a comparison here with the two equals. So if it is equal to 1, it's going to come back a true or false. So this evaluates the true or false. So if it's true, then player token is equal to 2. We're going to set it to 2. And then whose turn.txt is going to be, it is 0 turn. Or it, is, um, it is 0 turn, or O's turn. Here I go. Not O's turn. It is O's turn. I wonder if that posture, no, I don't think that posture is going to cause a problem. We'll see. And then in the NS log, this is optional. I put this in here for testing so that when we're writing it, we can kind of sort of see it. And then it also demonstrates what the NS log is really good for sometimes to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so player token, using this at directive to say that we're going to um, give the compiler a string, and the string we're giving it is player token. It's going to be equal to, now if you were here earlier for the iOS class for the Objective C class. I used a percent sign at symbol for string. Now it's a D because it's for a decimal. Well, decimal could probably D is a, kind of a generic number format. It's supposed to be for decimal. Could we use an I for integer, but it doesn't really matter. Either one, either one of them is going to work. In fact, decimal will print out precision if we had it. So, and then a player token is the variable that we're, it's going to be substituted in for here for this expression. And this is just for the NS log. It's not going to have any effect on the application running. It's just going to show up in our log on the bottom of the screen. And then um, here I've done an else if. And the else if is going to work. The if is not going to work. Because here's what's going to happen. In fact, I see this. In fact, there's a guy who took the, this tutorial actually came comes from a Deedle and Deedle text is where it comes from. There's a couple different variations of it on the internet. One guy insists upon posting, and I've already co commented on his blog, and I said, you can't use an if on that. It will always be the same player. <laughs> <laughs> if it's one, change it to two. If it's two, change it to one. It's never going to be two. <laughs> it's never going to make it out of there. Anyway, so I'm putting an else if in here, because I don't want this to go. If this one is already gone, I don't want this one to execute. If you put if and if, 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 or else, if you put an else in there, it's, still, it's not going to work. So Anyway, so long story short, I prefer to use an else if here to get the functionality to work correctly. Uh, so if the player is going to be equal to 2, yeah, it's going to be equal to 2, then uh, here, uh, if it is equal to 2, player token is equal to 1, switch it to 1. And so I can actually f clean this up a little bit from my paste job at Word wrapped all over the place. Um, Okay, so now we know that uh, whose turn is not going to be, it is now X, is, I'll put an apostrophe in here, X's turn. And then uh, NSLog player token is going to be a uh, player token. We're basically, we're going to print out uh, player token is equal to. Or, you know, I can just say a player is. How about that? Player is. So I know what this is printing out because I don't really like that either. So player is okay very good um, so now we have the updated user information update update player info being printed out but we're not really doing anything with it yet we just implemented the method so the button reset button is going to run a self reset board and we have a reset board <laughs> method that we're going to create this is what I was talking about before <clears throat> so the button I'm going to go ahead and paste this code into the button right now the button's going to run a method. So as I was mentioning before, I could just put the code for the method inside the button, but then we can't reset the board from anywhere else. We could reset the board when the player wins, 
reset the board, which is what we're going to do. So we can call it twice if it's you know easily accessible. Otherwise, we're going to keep calling the button over and over again. Anyway, so this one says a reset board and um, self reset board, which means we have to implement the reset board method, which I believe is probably going to be next in a line of stuff. And here it is. What is the reset board going to do? It's going to set s one dot image to null, s two dot image to null, s three dot image to null. That's how we're going to reset the board. We're going to get rid of the images, which means the images are going to go away. The ones that are on the screen. So clears the images out. And then we're going to set the player token mm -hmm. back to 1, which is what we did originally in the view did load. Start it back. And then change the uh, whose turn text. This is that label that's showing up. Change it to X goes first. So I'm just going to do this because I don't want to worry about cutting and pasting errors anymore. So I'm just going to come back here. Oops, I have to actually put the method in. All right. I'll take the whole method. I'm going to put the method, uh, eh, I'll put it right here above the other one. It doesn't really matter which method I put it in. And then now I'm going to see I either got choices I can put underscores in <laughs> or I can synthesize all of them. So if I can do this, this will get rid of it because now I don't have to synthesize it. But how many times am I going to do it? I could just come up here and add S1 through S9 up here. So now I'm going to come up here and just going to put a comma here and go S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, S8, S9. Because if I put it up here, then I don't have to change it everywhere else. <laughs> Otherwise, i got to change it everywhere else. So now all my error messages went away. And uh, X goes... Uh, I'm going to put it here. X is going to start again. Uh, and this one is commented out because of my pasting job. There we go. Thank you. Everything else looks good? Yes. The problem with cutting and pasting is the word wrapping. <laughs> Especially with those comments in there. All right. Very good. So now I'm going to go back to here and see what's going on here. So this is the method that the reset board is going to use. So next we're going to implement the game logic for the touching of the spaces on the board. Yes? Oh. I put a comma in between each one of them and I put them all in one line. You don't have to put the spaces in. No, you can put them all together. It's easier sometimes just put one line to synthesize. <laughs> you can put 20, you can put, I could put 11 lines down, not 10 lines. <laughs> so, if I can count. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. So now we have the touch event that's going to occur. So what's the touching about? Touches begin. So there's a okay. So there's a couple different versions of this game as well on the internet. There's gesture events, touch events, and there's also image touch. We could wire image touch events for each one of those images a little bit, a little too much. Or we can just do one for the entire program the entire view something and then figure out what got touched and then take to see what got touched here and say if it's if it's this person's turn then it's equal to that if this person's turn then it is equal to that so the way this is going to work is it's going to have a UI touch touch which is an event for all touches that occur on any object on the entire window on the entire view, I should say. Couldn't call it a window. The view is inside of the window. So it's attached to the view. So we're going to get a set of events that occurs from this. So it's actually sort of in a queue. You can actually capture them or you can just take them one at a time in terms of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So the event is for uh, the touches that begin. There's a couple of different variations of this method as well. So we can do a long touch, short touch, touch, touch. We can do gesture touches. Not going to do that for this particular one, but I do have a gesture one that takes a, a you can stretch a monkey out. So it's the monkey. 
you haven't seen that one yet, it's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> you put objects on top of objects, drag things around, and that's for gesture control. This one is just going to be touching. So, All right, so the UI Touch Touch, we have a new object here created. And this is going to get all the objects touching events. So check to see which UI image view was touched. So if the CG rectangle contains the points, well, S1 frame, S1 is image 1. S2 is image 2, S3, etc. The frame is the boundaries of the image object as it was placed on the canvas there. It's all in a frame. It's in its own natural frame. So touch location is in view in the self from the view. So touch location in view self and then from view. So you're getting from the view the touch location if it's inside, which is what this test is, and this comes back true if you touched inside of S1 inside the view and the view itself. So you can have multiple views and actually detect multiple different touches within different views and in different components inside of each one of them, depending upon what you're looking for. So this one's looking at S1. If it is, then if the player is one, then set the image to X. If the player is two, then set the image to O, and then move on. <laughs> There's only one touch that's coming through. Actually, I haven't tested it out. I bet if you've loaded it up, because there's no exit out of here, I bet if you put two fingers on and touch two squares simultaneously, will you get them both populating? Good test. That might also be another bug in this program. Okay, will it detect multiple touches simultaneously? No, one of them is just going to come in. And, oh, actually, it should take two. Do you have it on your phone? Is it working with two? It takes two? <laughs> so you can do two squares at a time? But does it put two X's? Oh, it doesn't. Okay, that's good. So we don't have a bug there. Okay, good. All right, I believe it's going to go one at a time, singular, into the queue. It's going to do this for all eight, excuse me, all nine images. And then at the end of this fabulous method, we're going to run update playing info. That's the one that's going to switch the player. So after we have switched the images to whatever image we want it to be, then actually if you click on the image more than once, it does switch it without the game being over. So you can you can change your image. There's no check on the image. So what it should do is before it switches the image, this method could be improved because before it actually changes it to an X, if there's an O already there and if it's not null, so it could check for null. Say if it's null, then put an image there. If it's not null, O's already taken it and you're an X or you're already an O, it could actually put some feedback and say, hey, you already selected this one. It's not empty. Pick another one. So that would actually be fairly easy. I'll leave you guys to that. I'm not going to implement that. I can't give you everything. <laughs> so that's one way you can improve this game, actually. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to just cut and paste this thing and see what happens with my word wrapping. Oops, there we go. Copy. Mm. I am in the viewcontroller.m file still, which is good. I'm going to put it above the, uh, and I'll put it, uh, I'll put that one, I'll put it right here. It doesn't really matter where I put it. No red marks yet. That's a lot of code I just pasted down. Seems to have worked. <laughs> I got lucky. We'll just leave it alone. <laughs> Sometimes when you paste it in there, word wraps all over. So now we can run the game, see what happens. Uh, it should work, but there's no check for a winner. Uh, and then, so we can add the implementation for the winner. Let's just see it work before we put the winner in here, because then we'll see what, what the what the issues are. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Build succeeded. That's always a good sign. Not a bad idea to run it at certain stop points <laughs> because then you know 
that you know where something got introduced and also double checks the logic as well because at this point if your X's and O's aren't working I wouldn't bother trying to figure out who won the game yet so now you can see my NS log down here it says player is equal to 2 because I just clicked on this button over here now if I click it again it says player is equal to 1 this is the bug I'm trying to tell you it doesn't see if the space is already taken so the O's can just dominate everything but there's no check yet. We haven't put it in yet. So you can see down here the NS log is helping me. So you, you can put that in there and you can figure, oh, well, nothing's happened. But I can go here and say, well, it's X's turn, it's O's turn. I can say, oh, it's so it's changing appropriately. And let's see if the restart works. It does. So my functionality so far has been pretty good. My board's visible. Everything looks good. So now I gotta figure out, well, what do I wanna do now when someone's gonna win, right? <laughs> I could just update the label here and stop it, but you can do that. You can you can figure out what you want to do. I put some code in actually. I, I did. Uh, let's finish the project. I put something in there to actually um, show that someone has won. So let's see what I did. Uh, so let's see. The method uh, will check to see if someone has won. So check for win. Well, when do we want to check for the win? Maybe after each player plays. Or maybe after we. Switch the player. Ah, so let's see what I put in here for the check for win. We have horizontal wins. Yes. If your reset button is not working, make sure you put in the reset code. You have a call to the method reset board, and your reset and your button is wired. Oh, that's a problem. You have wiring problems. <laughs> that's the second time. All right. So <laughs> and she knows it too. She's like, check to see if it's wired. <laughs> oh. All right. So it's a common mistake. All right. So uh, here's the method here. Let's see what we're going to do for checking one. So we have horizontal winds and we have vertical winds. We have diagonal winds. I think we have diagonal winds in here. Diagonal winds. All the different variations. This is nothing more than a bunch of if-then statements to go through to see if something condition has been met. So let me just look at the horizontal one. I'm not going to go through all of it. Let's just take one as an example. If s1.image is equal to s2.image and s2.image is equal to s3.image, yeah, they all match. And s1.image is not equal to null, which means all three of them are in there, and all three of them are equal to the same thing, then the person must have won. So what are we going to do? We're going to return yes. So we're just going to return this a boolean method. So it has bool as the data value. It's going to check each one of the squares. Come back yes, 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 yes. Or it's going to return no. So if it hasn't returned yes, then it's going to return no. <laughs> At the very end. So we're going to assign this value to a variable and then check the variable. If player is 1, then we can continue. I mean, we're not going to continue. So let's see. I'm going to cut and paste and stick this in here. It's just going to do all the different combinations. It's fairly complete, actually. It's not too bad. And again, there's another way. You can do a case switch on here if you wanted to. You don't have to do it this way. In fact, I think the deedle and deal example does a case switch on it. This is, I think, easier. So Because then this can just return. So let's see if this works. I'm just going to paste it right here. Hopefully it works. Interesting alignment. It only copied half the text? Where do we see that? Hold on one moment. Equals, equals, and equals, equals. Oh, I didn't get the second line. Address expression must be L value or value. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 
Uh, I didn't take my blue. <laughs> Is it for all of them or just this one? Let's see. Oh no. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's missing out all of why is it doing that? Let me try something else. I'm gonna open up text wrangler. Paste it in the text. Oops, wrong one. Hold on. Interesting formatting issues. Um hold on one second. Let me see if I can come up with a quick solution to this. It's reading it, you know, this I have to figure out a way of doing this so it cuts and pastes correctly and avoids these problems. So let's see. I'm just, I thought the PDF would do it, but perhaps it's the fonts. This looks like it's working. No, it's not. It's doing it again. Mm. All right, so I'm going to manually change it, fix it. Or you know what you can do? Ha 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 pulled out the solution. <laughs> Alright, we'll fix this problem once and for all. Pull out this solution file. We're looking at the viewcontroller.m. Cut and paste out of that one. So if you've downloaded it, here it is here. Did you copy and paste in text editor? Text editor. Yeah. Text edit. I put in, I type, tried text view, but text edit. Yeah. Then you can copy from there. Okay, you can do, try the text edit. Or, um, I'm going to do this method here because I like this method better. I'm just going to open up the view controller for the project and cut the method out of here. Here it is. Now let's see if this one works, actually. Huh? Yours is not working from the text editor or from here? Oh. Let's see if this one works. This one worked. <laughs> Perhaps the solution is just to provide maybe the files. Hmm. Provide maybe the Xcode files. But then that people would be dragging and dropping and putting them into the project. So. It does work if you cut and paste it out of the solution. Take that method, just that one method, cut and paste it, stick it in there. I believe it's the N, the ampersand symbols that perhaps are doing some sort of an escape sequence, some hidden code kind of thing going on there. Uh, but if you pull it out of the viewcontroller.m file, out of the solution, it should work. And mine did. I just cut and pasted it. So now if we... Um, are we ready to run it at this point? I think if we run it at this point, so we actually we ran it already. That's right. Um, so let's see. Let me go back to the distractions here. We ran it. So now we can check to see um, if the person has one, but we have to decide, well, where are we going to put it? So we can do it in a couple of different places. We can put it in the update player method. Because after everybody clicks on something, the touch event is having us call the update player to switch the player. So that's where I chose to put it. Um, and it seems to work okay there. You could possibly uh, put it, um, where could you put it? Um, in the touch event as a test first to see you touched on something, but did somebody already win? But then the other player is going to do it first. So that, yeah, let's put it in here. So here's the code for it. Hopefully this will cut and paste. And now I'm going to stick it uh, inside of the um, update player info. So decide if you want to report the win and lose working tic-tac-toe game. Okay, so the code that we're putting in here, before I put it in there, it gets all messed up. <laughs> Looks like this. Here's the Boolean. Self check for win. So check for win is going to come back. It's true or false. It's a Boolean method. So if it comes back, yes, there was a win because somebody horizontally, vertically, or whatever, won. So if this comes back true, then somebody won. So we're going to send up, in this particular case, a UI alert view. 
So I'm taking, I'm making an instance of the object UI alert view, calling it someone one. And that's going to be equal to UI alert view and initialize it with the title. There's a winner, and then the message is going to be someone won. So you have to figure out. Actually, this is too long. I'll just leave it like that. Somebody won. Whoops, I can't delete that. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, the delegate itself is receiving the message, and then the cancel button, title, OK to cancel the UI alert view, and then the other button, there's no other buttons, so we're setting them to nil. If you actually put together these UI alert views, you can actually set buttons, multiple buttons, and then have button actions, so, so you can set up action button for each one of the buttons, and then have the buttons do something if you wanted to, um, which is kind of fun. Um, and then someone one show, so show the UI alert view, and then now I'm going to reset the board. If I don't reset the board, then the person has to manually reset the board to start over again. So it's kind of nifty to put it all together into one. So let's see what happens. I'm going to stick it in the update player. I'll put it in the first part of it. I don't remember where I stuck it last time. So let's see. Update player is going to be way up here. Update player. Uh, we'll just stick it right here in the beginning because <laughs> it's going to reset the board and it's going to stop well, I got some interesting pasting going on here but it looks like it has worked got some, I'll just leave it, actually here I can fix it take out some of the, well that actually looks okay I'm going to make this method a little bit shorter, someone won uh, play again So you could optionally um, figure out where you wanted to put that check in. You could play around with it. Um, maybe put a label out there instead of an alert window. Um, reset the board automatically and maybe put some totals. You can keep track of the number of wins. In fact, someone had mentioned earlier it would be a nice idea to combine this week's example with last week's example. Use the database or the core data. Store the, store the activity. Because then every time you play the game, well, does it really matter? It's tic-tac-toe. But, you know, every time you play the game, this is not tic-tac-toe. This is like something more sophisticated, maybe. You could keep a running total. You can actually even upload that total to an Internet website or something if you wanted to. Update something through a web view if you wanted to, actually. <laughs> so, plenty, of, plenty of things you could possibly do with this to enhance it if you wanted to. You don't have to do anything too elaborate. So. Uh, now if I run it, it should hopefully work. Let's see what happens. I believe that was the last one. It should look like that. X's and O's. Oh, here we go. We got a an emulator. It's a good start. <coughs> so zero's turn. Here, I'll make it win. Oops, it won. <laughs> By knowing the known bug. So there's a winner. Someone won. Play again. And so it resets. It runs the reset automatically. Man, it's easy to win. It's easy to win when you know how to break the rules on this one. <laughs> now you could fix that. You could fix that problem so it doesn't. Oh, actually, there's also the scenario that I didn't think about until now, actually, is what happens when um, nobody wins. <laughs> You could check to see if nobody won. So you can make this game a little bit more sophisticated. Say, so, hey, down here it's a draw, it's a tie, or something. So that, that, you know, how would you do that? Well, then you'd check, you'd have to have number of turns and keep a counter to say if these things have been touched nine times. <laughs> and if your counter is more than nine and uh, you're still doing this, you should be done. So go ahead and say, hey, it's a draw. So, so that would be easy to fix. Or you could start it over again, actually, and say, hey, start again. <laughs> or, all right, questions on tic-tac-toe. So that just made the assignment that less thrilling. Yes? Um, I'm stuck in the app property for the uh, wiring the board to board. 
Oops, I closed it. Um, at property. Oh yes, I mean way up here in the viewcontroller.h file, we have properties. You know the board we never used. I don't think we used the board. Did we use the board? We cleared out all of the labels to zero. We didn't. We didn't reset the board. You can leave out. You can actually improve this by getting rid of the board. <laughs> we didn't use the board for anything. We could every game, you know, actually what you could do to make this even more interesting is every new game, change the board. The board is an image, just a cross image. So you could maybe make a, change the background on the board for each new game. And if you did that, you'd have to have the board property because you'd have to take this board and have the image, change the image on the UI image view to another image. But what was your question? I missed it. Um, no, they have Oh, Okay. Um, so the board was unnecessary, and then um, that was about it. I think if I, I'm going to clean this example up. When I clean it up, I'll take the board out. <laughs> and then and I have to fix it. I have to make it so it, uh, but th see, these are still are not uh, linked to anything. So that bothers some people for some reason, but not always going to be linked. Anything else before we move on? Yes? Check to make sure it's wired. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. What was your question? It shows you what? X or O. Uh, let me pause this for a second here. So we all have working tic-tac-toe games. Very good. There's just so many things you can do with the tic-tac-toe game. So actually, games are kind of fun to program. So here's another one. This is okay. So we're gonna start in, uh, which is good. It says 7:30, 8:30. Actually, we're gonna have plenty of time today. We're going pretty fast today for some reason. Um, the next one is in a three-part series. I'm just gonna show you part number one tonight, and uh, it's kind of entailed. Part number one goes through a lot, actually, um, and it's a, we're gonna build a table view application, and we're gonna use plist files and we're going to load the files into the emulator. So we're going to do some stuff we haven't done yet. Um, we're also going to add a few different things to the project manually. So we're going to start with a base non-generic application, not a single view, but an empty application, and then build it from scratch as well. So a little bit, um, little bit more advanced. It's in a three-part. So when you get done with this one tonight, save it. Save it for next week because next week we're going to get to continue this one. And if you don't save it, don't worry about it. There's an example. <laughs> you don't have to save it, but if you want to use yours, you can. <laughs> if not, what we're running through is actually out here again, just to remind you guys that samples, no images for this one, but this one is under example projects. Ooh, internet's running slow. Someone downloading Xcode still? <laughs> uh, oh, there it goes. Table view part one tutorial part one solution. So if you missed, if you you know can't get it, you don't have a computer with you tonight or something like that. Don't worry about it. You can still do it next week. Next week we're going to do parts two and three. So you can't just I can't do them all in one night. It's just too much. All right. So now we're going to create a custom application here. So the table views are a great way to present information. A lot of, you know, if you go out and you look at some of the, a lot of these apps um, that are out, everything's got a table view in it for some strange reason. It has, has some, I think it has something to do with the way, the ability to scroll through, especially on a small device. And it's a great way of organizing things. So table view is not a bad thing to get used to. There's a really cool tutorial out there or something about bugs, the bugs, bug something or other. It's good, but it's, um, mm -hmm. It just works with images, and images are actually pretty easy to put inside of table views. So this one's a little bit, uh, this one's going to work with information reading from a file. So we'll look at XML information from a file and load that in as well. So, All right, so uh, what do we got here? We're going to create a table view. Uh, we're going to look at, in this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, how the table view application is constructed from scratch without using the table view template, and then uh, populating the table with the custom cells and then how to add and delete information from the table. Okay, that's in part two, actually. And how to save and load the table's data to a file. We won't save it, but we'll load it from a file in this one. We have to manually put it in because we can't save it. <laughs> so, and you'll see how that's done, which is actually kind of enlightening. And then in the third part, uh, basic build, 
uh, excuse me, will be the final product from the builds from part one and part two. So start a brand new Xcode application. Choose to create an Xcode project. Select the empty application this time. And then uh, name the product friends and choose the object says below. You'll see last time we did the use core data. We're not going to use core data tonight. We're just going to basically build it from scratch. So, well, I've got a big list of stuff here. Uh, create new project. This one is going to be the empty application template. So click on empty application. Then click on next. And I'm going to call this one my friends because I already have a friends on the desktop. So my friends. And uh, now I see I have use core data by default selected. I don't need it, so I'm going to take it off. Don't. We're not going to use core data. So I pulled that off probably because the last time I created a uh, uh, empty application by default. It was selected from last time I used this computer, which was last, not last week, but the week before. I'm going to leave it on iPhone, and I'm going to go ahead and press next. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. Create it. So now you see on the empty application, well, the other one had a core data component in it. This one doesn't have anything in it. This is about as bare bone as you can get. I have an app delegate. Great. That's about it. Supporting files, kind of supporting files, not too much in here. I don't even have an XIB file in here. I don't have anything in this project. It's empty. <laughs> nice. Good way to start. All right, so for the minimalist. Otherwise, you got to like delete stuff out of it. And then you got the app delegate that's tied to something you've already deleted. So. So in order for a table view to load a new view, when a particular cell in the table is touched, we're going to add this component as well, although we're not going to load it. We're just going to load the views. Table view needs to be embedded in a navigation controller. Same way as we embedded the text view in a navigation controller, even though our navigation controller... Well, actually, we didn't put the navigation bar out there, which is, if we had added, I, I was thinking about that. If we had added the navigation bar, it would have worked. The controller was there. We just didn't have the bar on it. <laughs> so, anyway, long story short, um, we're going to create a navigation controller, which is very similar to what we did earlier in the, the I, I, I Objective-C programming course. If we create a new UI table view controller object with an XIB file, that's going to hold the content and then a new UI navigation controller that will push and pop views onto it. So inside the controller, the navigation controller, we're going to put the table view controller. So it's a nesting of components to make, make it work. And then when we click on it in the part two, it'll be opening up a separate view. So it'll be opening up another view on top of that. So create a new UI table view controller by selecting File new, uh, file here. What do we want to create? We want to do a UI table view controller. So we'll do that one first. And I just make sure we're not we we're gonna create an XIB for it for the user interface. And um, we're gonna inherit our subclass from UI table view. And we're gonna call it friends view controller. So let me show you how that's done. Because this is completely empty, I'm clicking on my friends. I can right mouse click and go file, new file, or I can come up here and go file, new file. Make sure that you're in the Coca Touch category up here, and we're selecting an Objective C class. So just remember, everything's an object, simple in the form of class. Clicking on next. Now it says NS object by default. We want to change it to the UI. So if I start, if I click down here and just take that out there and go UI, and then I go T, I get table view controller. <laughs> and we're going to call this one, and then it says view controller here. Well, I'm going to call it, uh, I think it's called friends table view or something like that. So this is friends, friends view controller. So I'm just going to put the word friends in front of it. 
So I actually I like to select out the subclass first because then it changes the name in the class selection and then I can just modify that. And if I leave the class selection kind of like, you know, with view controller on here, then I know this is a view controller. <laughs> We want to select the option here that says with XIB for user interface. Don't click on the tagged for iPad because this is not an iPad application and we're going to run it on an iPhone simulator because I like the iPhone simulator better. It's a little easier to see. And we're not worried about making a universal app. Did you have a question? The view controller is not an XIB file. The view controller has a .h and a .m file that turn in, it's kind of loud in here, turns into a class object. The class object, that controller is linked to an XIB file. So if we click on this button, we get all three. We get a dot, in fact, if I click on the button now, I just click on next and save it. I'm going to see three new files that are going to show up. That just showed up here. I got a dot h, a dot m, and then I get this guy, and I know it's a view controller for a tab, a table view, because I've got the table in here. So if yours doesn't look like this, you've either subclassed from the wrong subclass, or uh, you didn't click on that button, you should have the XIB file. If you don't have it, go back and just do it again, and just delete these files. So. Um, but yeah, no, the, from the model view controller, this is the controller, and this is the view. So it comes in a set. Actually, yes? Uh, is it necessary for these files to be under supporting files or it can be anywhere in the project? Oh, it can be anywhere in the project. doesn't matter. In fact, um, I clicked on supporting files, <laughs> which is how come I ended up here. If I want them somewhere else, I just drag them. So, now mine are in uh, the main folder. <laughs> and it'll work. Just no problem. In fact, I can drag them up this way and change the order of the files if I want to put the XIB below it. We good so far? Okay, good. Um, Alright, in the resulting window, let's just make sure I haven't missed any of these steps here. Oh, file new, new file. Objective-C class. Cook a touch group. We did that. Um, let's see. Very good, very good. Now we're going to do what we sort of did earlier with the app delegate. But and we don't. We're going to change the um, app delegate to include a UI navigation controller called Nav Controller. The window is going to already be there. So, and we're going to set a new property here. And the property is going to be that Friends View Controller we just created. And so we have Friends View Controller. That's going to be property of type data type Friends View Controller. So to reiterate a point I made earlier for those people who are in the Objective-C course, <laughs> we're creating new objects. Every time we put a set of classes in there, we've created a new object, and we're making an instance of this object, and we're making it in app delegate because we want the application to run this as the startup view controller that we're going to use for this application for this project. So I'm going to take my luck here. I'm going to cut and paste. <laughs> Playing with fire here. I'm going to open up Xcode and I'm going to click on the appdelegate.h file. Here's a trick that I kind of like to do, especially when it, there's no code in here. I'll just paste it below, then I'll remove the original once I compare it to see what's going on. So I can keep what's there originally and I put the new stuff in here. Yes? How'd you get the exit file? I'm sorry? How'd you get the XID? I got this file because I clicked on a little toggle button. In fact, there's a picture of it in here. Right here, actually. You got to click on this with XIB. If you didn't do it, remove the files, recreate it, or leave the files there and create a new one. Um, as long as uh, you remember what the new one is named, you don't have to. Do well, you can probably just delete the old one if you wanted to. If you don't click on this little button, you don't get the XIB file that goes with it. You want to make sure you have that XIB file, by the way, because once you start putting it in, and you can't, no, it's harder to change it later, but it's okay. You can still change it. Okay, so I know my import, this is good here, so I'm going to remove this line here. I already got it. Am I, uh, this is a new line. I need this one because I'm including 
I'm going to make an instance of the friends view controller object, so I need to include that one. I'm getting these messages because of the syntax so far. What I'm really looking for then is to kind of see how my interface looks like. And uh, it looks the same. So I know that this is going to be a good line of code, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Just, I'm just double checking this to make sure I've got everything set. I have a property here already. This is for UI window, and then I got the end, so. Pretty inclusive here. Um, I do have some cut and pasting issues. All right, someone can tell me what the problem is. Oh, it got taken out. It did not. It should. It needs a uh, asterisk. I probably removed it. Windows got it. Uh, let me take a look at the original. Something in my cut and pasting job. Something has gotten messed up. Uh, let's see. I should have just left it and put the lines of code in the middle of it. So now I have these extremely weird. You can delete that space. I think this is space. Like. Is there an extra space here? Uh, no. Yeah, one above. One above. Right here? Yeah. No, it shouldn't have caused a problem. Yeah, there may be. I think that's what. <laughs> Undo typing. Undo typing. Undo typing. Undo typing. <laughs> Actually, I got a better solution. App delegate. <laughs> there it is, cut and pasted correctly. <laughs> Without and you know, it's the funny thing is, is there's interesting little formatting marks I can't see, and I think it has something to do with some of the symbols in the text. So pull out the uh, pull out the solution, cut and paste the code out of the app delegate dot h if that's. Uh, <clears throat> See, and it's the same code. Yep, but this one works. Because <laughs> there's no funny characters in there. Alright, so I'm working on a solution to that. <clears throat> okay, so um, the other, the interesting thing to note is this uh, inclusion of the friends controller.h. And then, same thing as before, we're creating a window, we're creating a navigation controller, and then we're also creating an instance of friends view controller here. We're going to call it friends view controller. Same thing we did earlier, actually, very similar. Um, so now we're going to go to the uh, appdelegate.m file, and uh, instead of cutting and pasting it out of the PDF, I'm going to cut and paste it out of the original, so I can avoid this problem and not have to like keep on going back and forth. Uh, so what are we going to do here? <coughs> so the friends view controller will uh, also be created a .m file, which we've got, and we're, so we've made changes. Uh, to it, so we're going to remove all the source code in the app delegate.m and replace it by this one. This is going to include everything we need. So I'm going to look at this one first, and then I'm going to cut and paste out the original, so it's a little bit easier. So as before, we've got. Uh, well, actually, we'll compare because I have the original here. Same as uh, we did earlier. Actually, we have the setting the background color. We're allocating a window. We're making it visible, returning yes, which means the application loaded in the application menu. These guys are all empty. There's no implementation in this file. The only thing that's implemented in the file is the application, because it's a generic application. So we have to actually add the implementation of the view controller, so we can add the navigation controller and the view controller and have it set correctly. So what we're doing in the code, just so we have an idea here, we're, uh, we made properties of the navigation controller and we made properties of the friends view controller in the .h file. 
of the app delegate a few minutes ago. We're just going to add the two lines of synthesize. Don't actually need these two lines. Could leave these two lines out because what we're doing is we're synthesizing it to with the underscore. So if we left it out, we don't even I mean we would basically use the end, it wouldn't even matter. Which tells you this is an old project format because now you don't have to put it in. <laughs> so but we'll put it in just because it's an old project format. So what's different here, this is the application um, that we looked at a few minutes ago. In fact, I can probably compare the two of them side by side. And, uh, well, not easily, it looks like. This one is just using a window. It doesn't have anything in it. It's empty. This one here is setting, uh, this, it's, uh, it's using um, the launch options to set and allocate the window, which we need. But then we're also doing two more things. We're doing a self friends view controller is going to be equal to a friends view controller. Initialize it with a style UI table view style plane. There's actually different options. You can experiment with the different options. Come out with different um, motifs for the styling. The plane is what we're going to use right now. And then self.navigation controller is going to be equal to the UI navigation controller alloc initialized with root controller self mm -hmm. friends view controller. So the friends view controller is inside of the navigation controller, which is inside of the window of this application. So it's, there's, a, there's like this hidden hierarchy that's happening with the interface. We need the navigation controller in order for the window to actually um, be functional. We need the window in order to show something. Inside the window, we load the views. Inside the navigation controller, where we load the view controllers. So we have the views and the view controllers that are working together, which is that XIB file. We don't actually ever have to load the XIB file at all. The view controller is loading that. So imagine it just like has an you know, outer window with an inner window and then an inner window. That's what we have, all, in all enclosed of this window. And then we have frames that are part of the hierarchy inside what we saw earlier with those images. So we have frames inside of the windows as well, but those are for the objects, for the components that we're putting in there. Um, so one of these days, um, if you get download one of those books, you know the uh, iPhone books, you know they're like you know about four or five inches thick for people who like to read. Uh, one of those pages will show you a chart as a hierarchy of all of the different components and how they all fit together. And eventually, you're probably going to want to see the big picture. I think probably just to know what your other options are, maybe. I don't know. But we're not going to look at it right now. Uh, so instead, we're going to take a look at this rest of the app delegate file and uh, the rest of the code. We're going to set the background color to a white color. We're going to set the root controller to the navigation controller. And we're going to make them visible. And then we're going to return. The rest of this is just those empty methods. Nothing else got implemented. So I'm going to go and uh, instead of cutting and pasting it from here, I don't need this one anymore. And uh, what you might notice is actually you can op you can double click on these files and open them up in separate windows, and not part of your project. It's not adding it to the project. Xcode puts it inside a project. Some some ID not Xcode. Um, Eclipse, but some some of them put some actually inside of the project. Doesn't add anything. Doesn't affect anything. So just so I don't have to worry about it, I'm just going to take this whole file, copy it, and put it into here. I highly recommend doing the same, actually, if you're doing this along with me. No cut and paste errors. Perfecto. Um, so this was the uh, .m implementation of the app delegate. So now that we have the project set up, we, well, if we run, well, I'm not going to, well, I just pressed to run, but hold on a second. Let me put it back on the simulator. If we run it, we should get an empty little window that pops up. It should run right now, actually. Nothing's going to happen. We haven't put anything in the window or anything. But we should see something, we would hope. Not a bad idea. Once you've played around with the app delegate to run the project, to make sure that you're functioning, because what you don't want to do is get to the very end and discover that it doesn't work. That is some basic <laughs> app delegate problem. And lo and behold, look at that. It's a table view. So we have, you can't, probably can't see it. Or maybe you can't see I actually can see it better on here. We have the navigation controller. <laughs> we have we have the navigation bar up on the top too. 
and we, which is what I thought I was going to see in that other project, and uh, we have the lines here. So now we're going to do is stick something in it. So we're going to nest another component inside of it, which is going to be the items that we're going to use, or the cells, actually, we're going to call it a cell. So I'm going to close the simulator. If yours didn't show up, it means your app delegate did not get, uh, did not get assigned the controllers, the navigation controller or the table view controller. Okay. So let's see what we got next. So we're using the table view style plane. Remember that? To initialize the table view, the options for the uh, plane and the style grouped, which are grouped together. So this is the other one we're using. I didn't point that out, but we're also using a style grouped, which is where we're grouping a bunch of cells together. Um, to various different sections. In this part of the tutorial, we'll present the, the friends list in one of the uh, contiguous sections. One of the pieces will have a friend in there. Later, we'll group them in alphabetically. So if we can keep track of this grouped style groups, we can put them in groups and then we can sort them and do things with the cells. So we can keep track of the items that we're adding to the table view. Um, this one, we're just going to simply add something to it. Note also that we are sending the set root view controller message to set the window rather than the older style, which is going to set the window to the add sub view, so, which is changed in the current version of the iOS, so, um, which is the problem we were actually having with the previous example. <laughs> we were using an older method, which is why the navigation controller didn't get added incorrectly. We have to actually have to add the navigation controller to the view. So set view, set the root view controller. So set the window, self window rather than the older style. <coughs> Not going to worry about it, but you'll see that in some older examples when you're going out there and you're looking at stuff. The table view controllers change significantly, so what ends up happening is you find these little source code pieces and you try to use them and they go, how come that's not working? <coughs> or how come it's not showing the navigation or something? And then you realize, oh, it's older example. So, uh... There will be a warning message. If you use the older message, you'll get a yellow little thing. Actually, I've never seen the warning message and I didn't see it earlier, so I don't think that that's really relevant. So we also need a class to represent the model. So in this case, uh, we're going to list out uh, friends in this particular example. So we want to represent and manipulate the table view. So now what we're going to do is create another one here. So we need to add a class by right mouse clicking the navigator. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Or going to the file, new file. Select an Objective C class with the option from the template list and define friends. So we're going to put friends inside of the friends list. Go figure. And it's going to be a subclass of NS object because these guys are just going to hold friends. So this time, though, because we're going to subclass NS object and not a view controller, these will be grayed out, so we don't have to worry about selecting them. So let's go add the friends class. And I'm going to stick this uh, in the same location. So now I'm going to actually click here where it's supposed to be, and I'm going to go File, New, File. And then it's an Objective-C. So there's mostly Objective-C classes for the most part. Uh, we've actually looked at most of these except for, we haven't looked at extension and we haven't looked at the test cases yet, but uh, we will. Uh, so now we see we're stuck back here on the UI table view controller, so I'm going to unclick it. I'm going to go down to the bottom and change this one to NS objects. There we go. And so this unselected, this is not selectable anymore. Because there's no such thing as a view controller, excuse me, uh, an XIB for an object and that's extending NS object. So in here I'm going to put in friends. It's going to represent the friend items that are going to appear in the cells. So I'm going to press OK, or next I should say. Create. Now you notice, so now some of my supporting files again. Well, it doesn't really matter. I can leave it down here or I can move them up here. I'll put them up here. So, so now you see I have uh, extending from NS objects. So this is pretty simple. Nothing in it really. So let's go back and see what we're going to use it for. 
So the Franks class will contain a single property, and for now, two instance methods that are declared for friends. So we're gonna basically set up the uh, set up the situation to extend it in part two. Uh, in our interface class here, uh, let's see, interface friends and this object we just looked at that that's always in here. So we're going to add to it some properties. So one property is going to be an S dictionary. Mm -hmm. It's going to be called friends dictionary. So in um, C plus plus and C we have arrays, hashes. Actually, it depends on which libraries you're using. Um, you can uh, use the, some of the template libraries and bring in a bunch of stuff. But normally we don't necessarily have a dictionary. In Objective-C we have what's called a dictionary, and a dictionary which is going to have a key um, value of relationship, which is like a regular old dictionary data structure. So it's very similar to an array, but it's a nifty little, nifty little um, data type uh, that can be used. Um, here we're these are just going to be NS strings that we're going to use that, that are going to hold the file name, and then we're going to have a load and we're going to have a save function. So these are two methods that are going to load and save. We're going to implement the load. Uh, actually, I think we're probably going to implement both of them, but let's see what happens. Um, probably not until then part two, but let's see. So I'm going to go back here and find my friends and actually cut and paste it from here rather than taking it from that tutorial. So now we're in friends.h. In friends.h, I could just drag the file and put it into the project. Actually, let me show you something else. <laughs> well, you could drag if I wanted to. Instead of cutting and pasting, if I'm really going to take this technique, I could drag the file and pop it in here. Let go. Let's just copy it in. Well, that's probably going to give me an error message. Create the groups. Well, maybe not. Let's see what happens. Yeah, friends can't be copied in. So then I could go like this. Friends is just looks like that. It's just empty. So I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to move it to the trash instead of keeping the reference in the project folder because then I still won't be able to copy it in. So I'm going to move it to trash. Now friends is gone. So now I should be able to copy it in. All my friends are gone. <laughs> I've deleted them all. <laughs> <laughs> Add to targets, yes. Uh, you know what, it's already part of targets. I'm going to leave it right there. Copy items into the destination groups folder. Now that's the other friends. Now I have new friends. Because I deleted all my old friends. Now I have new friends. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but it does sound kind of weird. Alright. Let's see if that's going to pro- let me see if that's going to cause a problem. Build succeeded. No. Okay. I hesitate doing that only because uh, I don't want to mess up the project properties, but uh, it seemed to have worked actually in that case. So I think I'll continue cutting and pasting though just to make sure. Because a funny thing happens when you delete stuff and you move stuff around, you get in all these really weird project errors. But we're still functional, so I'm going to leave it alone. All right, so I added. Uh, I probably could have just written it faster, but I added the two prop one property and two methods. Yes? It's a new data type that you're being introduced today. It's like an array, but it's a lookup dictionary. So instead of it being a sequence or a list of information, a dictionary has two components to it for each entry, a key and a value. Yeah. So we have a it's a built-in uh, data structure mm, data type, I should say, data type that's being used. Yeah, it's a hash table. Well, it's an implementation of one. So there's dictionaries have things for set key, get key, um, set value, get value, um, or actually it's not. It's just value key. Um, and you use it just like a dictionary. We're going to see, actually, because we're going to load from a, P, a plist file. We're going to put in some uh, data and load it into the dictionary. So why are we doing that? Because we don't read and write to files. It's kind of like why you put stuff in an array, actually. Uh, because you don't want to have to keep, you just want to organize it. So, it's a data type that's not in a lot of languages. It's in Objective C, though. So, dictionary type. A lot of the scripting languages have dictionaries, like Python, I guess. I think has a dictionary. Were you in the .h or .m file? I was working with the .h file. Are you getting a file that's 
Yeah. No. Shouldn't be. I have a warning that says it's incomplete. Yeah. Because we have a bunch of stuff we just added to the dot h. We haven't finished it yet. You know why we have that actually? Is because we have these two methods here. We implement. We we put in two method prototypes in a dot h, and we didn't implement them yet. So that's one of those things where it says you know incomplete implementations. Like yeah, I know I haven't finished. It. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> That's uh, one of the most annoying things, but it's actually kind of good because when you're all done and you see that, then you still miss something. So it's not a bad thing. All right, so we added the two function prototypes and the one property to the .h file. Now we're going to open up the .m file and make the changes as follows. We're going to synthesize the friend dictionary. Um, actually, this one here. I'll just go through it and then I'll cut and paste it and put it in there. But uh, we're going to implement, uh, this is the standard code that we see before. We're going to synthesize friend dictionary. And here are the two methods. We have save friends and then we have load friends. And we're saving and loading from what's called a plist file and I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. Um, it's a text form but it's an XML file that we can put in key values that we can store quite easily. Uh, and we'll see how that's done in a few minutes because we're going to create it and put it into the project. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking and creating a string. So the document path is going to be equal to the NS search path for dictionaries and domains. Well, we're going to use and take the NS dic document dictionary. Well, where, where, where is that going to be? Where Here's where it's looking for it, actually. If you um, go out to uh, your finder, you go into your home directory and you click on the library folder. I'm going to go through this again in a few minutes when we actually put the file in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I should have a uh, library. And if I look at application support, this is the weirdest spot to put this thing. iPhone simulator? You know all those projects I keep loading up in the simulator? Here's where the document folders are. Here's where the folders are. So I think I've been running 6.1 projects. And if I click on the applications that have been loaded, I have one, one, two, three, four, five installed applications. This guy should be friend. No, that's date picker from earlier today. Unfortunately, they're not labeled correctly. Yeah, let's see which one's this one. It's my text view. And I did that one earlier today too. Tic-tac-toe, there's my tic-tac-toe game. Uh, my friends, that's the one. And then we have a folder. Well, it's empty right now. <coughs> we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop something into that. And that's where this is actually picking it up. Oops. That's this directory <laughs> that it's getting it from. It's from the documents directory. That's the documents directory on the simulator. We have a documents directory that's associated with the application on the phone as well. But we're running it on a simulator, so we can actually see that. We can actually get to a file manager, install one on the phone, and actually see that documents directory as well. And if you wrote the database, that's the same directory we put the SQL database in. So you can delete that database out from that example from last week if you're concerned about it taking up too much memory. But you know what ends up happening, however, is every time you upgrade the iOS, the whole thing gets wiped out. <laughs> All the data gets removed. So you don't have to worry about it. Eventually, you'll get rid of it. So, um, okay, so that's the documents and this document directory. That's what it's going to. We have a path that we're going to say to this file name that we're going to create. And the file name is going to be of a type plist. So I'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's an XML file, text file, that we're going to edit inside of Xcode that we're going to put this dictionary in of our name and telephone number and email address because we're going to keep track of friends. Um, and this string is going to, it's just the save method. This is the save method. It's going to append it. So it's going to take a string and append this, the string by appending path component to the file name. And it's going to write to the, so we're going to run a write to file. And the write to file is going to automatically, uh, yeah, so there's not going to be any checking on it. So it's going to be the friends directory, friends directory is uh, 
the directory location where we have the uh, friends p list file stored, which is actually stored in the documents directory. The load is going to do the exact opposite. It's just going to load it up. So we're going to look at the document path. Well, that's going to be the search for the directories in domain path, the document directory, which is a method call on a built-in object that does the searching for us. So we're going to create the document path by running the method to search for the directories in the document folder that's called doc document directory. Take the path and it's going to be equal to the document path, which is nothing more than a string. Then we're going to take uh, and create a string to the, the path. Actually, after we have the directory, then we're going to have the file name and we're going to have the path so we can essentially put all the pieces together to look for the file, load the file. So it's going to be equal to the components, the dictionary, NS dictionary, dictionary with contents of file, <laughs> plist path. So unfortunately this reads like Greek or Braille if you're fumbling around with it. Because what you have are built-in methods that automatically find paths, find files, read files. So not like the old days when we had to open up a file, read it byte by byte, put it in an array, sort it, do you know, find the end of line. Don't have to do any of that stuff. Unfortunately, it's more confusing because now you have to think about it. It's like, well, it's all automated. Yeah, we're running a method call. The method call that we're running is the on NS. Oh, well, it's it's an object that we're going to create that runs a method to read in the contents of the file from the file that's provided. And the file that's provided is the file that we've created in the document path. How's that file going to get there? We're going to copy it in there. So long story short, we haven't created the file. We're going to create a file. We're going to copy it from the project. We're going to put it in this document directory. And we're going to open up the file. And we're going to read it. We're going to put the contents into the table view. And then eventually we're going to save the contents. I don't. I can't remember if it's in part of this this one or the next one. But we have three parts to this. So, so let's just at this point, I'm going to cut and paste and complete. Put this code in friends.m. So I'm going to just friends.m is pretty empty right now. So I'm just going to take this m out here. Actually, let me just. Ooh, I just closed my window, which means I have to go back and find it. Uh, so see, I'm just going to come back here so I don't have to cut and paste out of that tutorial and just take friends.m and cut and paste out of here, which is essentially the contents I just showed you a few minutes ago. Not too much. Just those two methods because we only have two method implementations in friends. And another interesting question is how do we know that friends is supposed to have this functionality? Why didn't we take this functionality and put it in the view controller? Because it doesn't belong in the view controller. <laughs> <laughs> it's an object essentially that's going to be used to control the dictionary of the friends. So if we abstractly pull it out, then we can reuse it. So if we have another app that we want to create that's going to keep track of a list of friends from a dictionary format like this, we can just re go ahead and reuse the code. If we embed this code, which we could easily do, put it all inside of one class file, hard to pull that out, hard to understand what's there after you look at it from you know a year from now, hard to figure out what's going on with it. And then plus it's hard to make an instance of that object. You have to make an instance of the entire. You have to use the entire view controller in that case. You have to run the methods without, you know. So it's a little bit um, a little bit trickier. We'll make an instance of friends and we'll see how that works. Alright, so I've got the code for friends cut and pasted and I put it in there. Now I need to define a simple plist file containing a single entry. Because we're only gonna we're only gonna load one entry in here. We're just gonna start out small here. We're only gonna start with one friend. And move forward. So we're gonna create a new plist file in the supporting files folder by right clicking the uh, folder, select a new file. Let's just go through the steps here. We're gonna, instead we're gonna choose the property list template, <coughs> which is down here. So let me bring up that window so you see what I'm talking about. It's telling us to put it down here. This is essentially where supporting files are supposed to go, which would be this this file would be considered a supporting file. 
These other files, I think, are really part of the project, but by default, it appears like so that they're being put into supporting files. So I've got uh, supporting files highlighted. I'm going to File, New, File, just the same thing as we've done before. Okay, so in before, what we were doing is picking from this category of Coca Touch classes because we are on an iOS device. If we were on an Apple, we were just going to create a Mac op. We go Coca. So now over here we've got uh, resources. Huh? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Property list. No, property list, a supporting list. Well, anyway, resources over here, we're selecting property list, but it's really a resource type of file. So this is supposed to be organized. In fact, if you go over here and see user interface, we can create a storyboard. We can add a view, a window, an application. We can actually put in a C or C++ file in there. The core data we looked at the other day, actually the default project came with a core data. We can add another, we can add core data to this project if we wanted to. Um, so we're going to put in here plist. And I'm going to go ahead and select next. And I'm going to see that we can call it something, what's it going to be called, friends list or something? Let's see. Uh, friends. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to put some friends in here. Let me make sure I haven't missed anything. So it's property list under resource. And call it friends. And then leave the plist extension. So it's going to be added for us automatically. Actually, here's our little screenshot here. So let's see. Yeah, we can... Um, it's not actually here. This is the name of the... Don't, don't put it in. It gets added for you. So if I just type in the word friends here. Just like the screenshot, actually. It just has friends in there. It'll add the extension for you because it's of the type plist. It's added right here. It's highlighted. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's take a look. Oh, it doesn't matter where you stick it. <laughs> it um, this is the location. You can I can I didn't click on when I did this screenshot. I didn't click on supporting files. I clicked on friends. Um, you can actually drag it as well if you've stuck it somewhere else. In fact, it doesn't have to be here. You can stick it up in here if you wanted to. It says groups down there because I had clicked on, or it says friends because I I called the original friends. And if you look at this project, this other project, let's see, my plist file, is, if I go into the friends project, it's in, so it is, oh, everything's in supporting files on this one, <laughs> yeah, I leave it in supporting files. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm looking at this wrong. Here, I can go like this with this. There we go. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Let me, let me undo that. One. Well, that's alright. We'll just leave it alone. I'll move supporting files to the end. <laughs> there we go, you're right. It's in friends. So it doesn't really matter. None of this stuff really matters where I just put it. So, so I, I don't actually use the file structure the you know the best appropriate way. When you get into uh, Android development, you find it uh, that's all based on the file structure. <laughs> resources have to be in resources, and everything has to be like divided out where it's supposed to be. Yes. Do you mind going to your friends file? Oh sure. Yeah, okay. uh, which errors are you getting? Uh, next to NS Gray. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Where to? What do you have as undeclared? It says use of undeclared identifier in this document. In this document directory. Uh, did you cut and paste out of that PDF file? Yeah. Yeah, cut and paste out of the finished project file instead. I think you're yeah. probably getting some special characters that are coming in from that formatted file. 
I'm coming up with a better, in fact, I think I might just post the separate files or something, or put them in text format or something. I thought that the PDF was a good solution, but that's not working out either. But um, all you have to do is uh, download the finished product, double click on the folder, open the folder up, just take friends.m, double click on that one. It'll open it up in a separate window and then you just cut and paste out of here. Or compare it, maybe you can fix it, but most likely it's something you can't see in here. It's a special character that got pasted in. All right, um, so now here's the fun part. We're going to add some friends. So let's go back to these lovely instructions here. Uh, so now we're going to open up the friends.plist file. And we're going to, there's two, a couple of different modes to this file. I'm going to show you the source code version of There's also a GUI way of adding stuff to it. So it's a special kind of file. It's an XML file. So you can choose to work with the plist from a graphical user interface, or sometimes it's easier to work with it from an XML point of view. If you click on the file, as you notice with anything else, if you click on any file, it opens it up over here. So this is showing you the graphical user interface to the file. If I right mouse click on it, I can open as, and then I can select source code. <laughs> Now I see the source code version of the file. Some people like this. Mm, this is reminding me of Android development again. Some people like you know, the other view of it. Doesn't really matter. Um, in the instructions here, we're going to add a new friend in. And we're going to create a new friend with a dictionary entry. And the dictionary is going to have an opening dictionary tag and a closing dictionary tag. If you're familiar with HTML, this is just like HTML, it's XML. However, because HTML mocks up the presentation of the text, this is going to give us data. So in here we have a tag, a dictionary entry. The key is my name here. You can put in any name you want. And then I have an array for the value that's going to be associated with it. It's going to have two strings in it. So it's going to have an email address and a telephone number. So we have an opening and a closing bracket set, just like HTML, opening and closing bracket set. Um, that's in reverse order. Interesting. Yeah, opening and closing bracket. The key is my name. They uh, raise the value that's associated with it. And uh, the dictionary is going to be opening and closing bracket for the definition. So I'm going to go back to this file here. See what I've got here. Dictionary. Yeah, paste this in here. Yeah. Oh, remove the yeah. remove oh. the dictionary. Yep, you're right, you're right, you're right. It has the empty let's see if it works actually. Remove this tag here. And that way, because I have the opening P list, closing P list. So I'm gonna paste it in here. And lo and behold it pasted. Okay. <laughs> Space is just like HTML, it doesn't matter what kind of spaces I have, and I'm just going to leave it alone. So I'm going to go up here and go File, Save, actually, and save it. <laughs> I have a what? I have a closing one here. It, it um, The clo opening and the closing um, were wrapped on me. So Actually, I could put it. It doesn't really matter, um, but you're right. I can put it like that. It looks a little nicer, actually. When you actually, here I'm gonna take away the spaces here. Now, what I've defined is one element <laughs> that I've stuck in here, and the element is a piece of data that has a key and a value associated with it. So my name's gonna show up as the key, and then we have the value. That's gonna be the array. Uh, let me save it, and we'll go back to the GUI. If we open it as a property list, we see it here. We have a little button here. You can barely see it. It's a, it's a plus. I just clicked on it. <laughs> and so I can put in here. I wonder if this is going to blow up if I put another entry in. It's, not, it's actually going to only load the first one, I believe. 
because I don't have it running through any sort of... Well, let's see what happens. I'm going to put in here another... another... entry. And then I have to change this one to an array, though. And then add an item that's going to be... What were they? String items? No, 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 no. Uh, let's see what I've got in here. Hmm. Here. Let's just do it. I'm gonna, actually I'm going to take it out. I don't want to blow it up. <clears throat> oh, minus. There we go. <laughs> if I click on it, I can see item 0, item 1, and then I can add them in, um, which is going to be the better way of doing it. So add the main key and then underneath it. Click on the item. Click on the arrow that shows up next to the item, and then you can change the uh, the arrows. It's not the best. I think it's kind of small. It's not really. I don't think it's really the best. I like the actually just like looking at it from an XML point of view. But uh, same thing as we did with the core data. I don't like that interface either. It just kind of rearranges itself on me, and just I like, you don't know, don't feel like I have any control over it. But uh. all right, I'm going to save the file. Because I want to make sure I get the most current version of the file when I go ahead and move it. So now the beauty of the plist format is that we can use the file as a mapping into a plistable object, which is what we did. We created a dictionary, which is a plistable object. So in this case, the NS dictionary consisting of an NS array of NS strings. <laughs> Uh, so what we did is we kind of made it work by using a data that worked a data type that works with a data type with an object type that works with the dictionary, which is how this is uh, commonly used. So the keys of the dictionary uh, will be the names of our friends, and the values are going to be the array containing, as we saw before, the two items that are strings, the email address and the phone number. Save the plist. If you don't save it, you may not get the whole file because we're now going to drag and drop it into the dictionary directory, into the documents folder. So we need to copy the plist now into the documents directory on the simulator. In the future we can just create it, but we don't have any functionality to create it yet. Plus, then you wouldn't be able to see how you could actually do this. In order to do this, we need to run the Xcode project to create this folder. So there's the key right there. Have we run the project yet? Yeah, we did run it. We probably have it, which is why I saw if you haven't run your project yet, run your project. Because then it will install it on the emulator. And if you want to install it on the emulator, actually let me show you something real quick because some people actually have to run it. Not a bad idea to see if it works as well. And we can I can see exactly what's installed on this emulator by closing the running project and taking a look at see what's on the desktop. So, let's see, there's my fancy little emulator. Nothing's going to happen yet, because I don't have the file in there yet. <laughs> but uh, if I clicked on the button here, I see I have date picker, friend, my friends, my text view, tic-tac-toe. Oh, I have two versions. I have tic-tac and tic-tac-toe. I ran two different versions of the tic-tac-toe. And you know how to get that soft, right? You go over here and you go reset content and settings. It removes all your projects. But in this particular case, I want to keep the projects because I want to play around with it. So I got one, two, three, four, five projects. So what I'm going to do is find the folder. I'm going to find the folder by going into this directory path here. So run the project. Notice a new directory appears. Uh, how are you going to find it? You're going to go into library application support iPhone simulator. And then the one you're running it on. So let me just go through that a little bit slower so you can see it. Actually, we don't need this running. I can shut this down. Your home directory, whatever your home directory happens to be called, it might be called your name. So some people, I have mine call, mine is labeled home. It might actually be your name or your like, might be called your login name. And you're going into library. So the library subfolder of that. And you're going into application support, which is the weirdest location, I think. <laughs> and you're going into iPhone simulator. And then you're going to select the simulator that you're running. In fact, do I have anything on 6? Oh, I have two projects on 6. Interesting. Okay. I believe this is 
that I was using. In my simulator folder, I have applications. Applications are the applications I've been installing. We can actually look at the temp, the root, the media. You can actually put pictures in here. You want it to pull, because what ends up happening is the emulator is empty. And so you want there to be pictures, you want there to be content on there so you can manipulate the content with your app. You know, go over to the library and pull out all this stuff. Then you can find it. Now, unfortunately, we can have to kind of manually see which one I've got here. I found my friends. That's actually, this won't work. You can't take and copy this onto an iPhone. It has a certificate on it, which is what we put. This is the reason why we have to go through the, this is the application right here, by the way. It means it won't run. It won't, well, it's not going to run on the Mac. If I copied it over, if I, you know, put my um, device in here and somehow got into a file manager and copied it over and installed it manually without going through the Apple Store or without going through Xcode. But there's hacks out there. So it's not going to work, but there's ways of cheating it to get it to work. It's easier just to pay them $99. <laughs> Or get on a student account and use your device because then that's all that you have to violate all this certificate and the provisional stuff that we have to go through if we have a device in order to get the device to work with Xcode. That's the file right there. That's the ape. It's equivalent to the Android APK file. And the Android system, you just hook up your Android, you copy it over, and it works just fine. Can't do that. Yeah? The library folder is going to be, if you go to the Go from Finder, and you go to the home directory, it might be called your name, and then you're going to see library right here, inside your home folder. It's the default location for where Xcode installs. Try another folder. Oh, it could be hidden. It's a hidden folder. You have to unhide it. How do you unhide it? There's a command to unhide that folder. Um, Google it. <laughs> if your library folder is hidden, you have to figure out how to unhide it. I can't remember right now. If you can't remember, if you can't, if you probably can Google it faster than I can go look it up. Or experiment with it. That's yeah. So if you get into the iPhone simulator from that, and if you're working on a development system, you should unhide that library folder. I don't think I'd keep it hidden. Okay, uh, give me a few minutes. Let me get this working, and then I'll troubleshoot problems. If I click on applications, what I'm looking for is my friends, which I found, and then I have the documents folder here. So for those of you who have it hidden, after we're all done, we'll, tri we'll figure that out. Right now, for those of you who don't have it hidden, let's move forward. We're going to copy from the project folder, we're going to actually copy the plist file into this. What we're copying it into is called the documents folder. The documents folder is inside of the project. It has a bunch of numbers on it. So you have to find the one that has the right application and this one's my friends happens to randomly be the second one I don't know which one it's going to be on your computer uh, I think it is the second one yes it is so drag and drop and put the plist file in here um, so I'm actually going to take it from the folder that's out here on my desktop which is where I saved the project so I think I called it my friends or something yep, here it is my friends I go into my friends, click on the folder here, and I should see the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friends P list. So I'm going to go copy. Copy friends P list. Paste friends P list. Now I have friends P list inside of the documents folder. This is in lieu of having the app actually write it, which is what we're going to do in part two. <laughs>
But then you wouldn't realize that all these folders are out here either if you didn't look at it. So it's not a bad idea to get familiar with what the simulator is actually doing. Because this works with video files, with anything that you want to simulate, you stick it out here, essentially. Alright, so for those of you who don't have it working, you should actually, if if you can't copy the file in, the project should still run. You should not be getting any errors. It's just going to come up empty. If you copy that in, let me make sure we're done with this tutorial. I don't think there's too much left to it. Ah, you know what? It's in here. How you can unlock, how you can make it hidden, uh, unhidden. Uh, in the folder, documents, copy the friends folder to it. If you can't find the library folder under the username, your home folder, you may need to show show hidden files in your system. Here's one way of doing it is to create a short um, automator, a little script that turns it on. To rehide the files, change the true to a false above here. One way of doing it, probably an easier way. In fact, I think you can probably can toggle it now as a property, but I'm not sure. Google it. This is an old version. This is the one that's going to do it? Okay, did it work? Okay, good. If I had just looked at the uh, tutorial, I forgot that that was in there. I haven't looked at it in a while, obviously. All right, so, so it worked on um, Mountain Lion. Oh, good. Okay, good. Huh? Oh, you did? Okay, good. All right, so now uh, the plist file is located in the Documents directory. You need to proceed to hook it up. So we still haven't hooked up the project yet. So we have one final step to put everything together, and we have to send the Friends View Controller. In the Friends View Controller, we need to make an instance of the Friends object that we created, and then the Friends object is going to work with that Friends uh, plist p file that we created. So open up Friends dot uh, excuse me Friends View Controller dot h, and we'll add the code for that. So now we're in the view controller. We've set the app delegate to load the view controller. We've created the friends object. So now we have to put the connection between the view controller and the friends object. So I'm going to open up friends view controller. And in here, <coughs> now do I dare? Let's try it out. I'm going to cut and paste and see what happens. I'm just going to, actually, you know what? Let me just put this code in here. We're just going to add a property, and we're going to add the import of friends. So I'm putting in one line of code. If I find the correct one here. It's going to add a property for a friend. Here's our friends, but I need to put, include the header file up here. So I'm going to import it's just easier to, to type at this point. <laughs> so, import friends.h because we're making a pro we're, we're creating a property friends because we're going to make an instance of this object that's going to load up the file and lo load up all of our friends and put it in the table view. So I'm going over to the viewcontroller.m file next. And I'm going to get rid of this interface. I don't like that in there. There we go. So it was just one line of code. Well, actually, it's two lines. It's the import, and then it's the property. If we put the uh, property in here, we need to import it so it knows what we're making an instance of. So we'll open up the friend uh, friends view controller m, and we're going to make some changes here. We're going to synthesize friends. So go ahead and synthesize friends. And then we're going to make it so it loads up the property list. So right here, I'm going to paste in here. I got my synthesize for friends. So now I'm going to go and see, well, what else do I need to do? We're going to end it with style. We're going to go, Actually, I think this is the only line that's changed. Actually, self dot friends load friends from p from p list friends. So I'm gonna be conservative. I'm only gonna cut this out here or copy this out. Let me just check real quick to make sure that that's the case. Super uh, self. Yeah, looks pretty good. So. 
in here. I'm just going to put this line in here. Sell friends, friends, load friends from, P, which is the load method that we created from friends, sell friends as friends here, friends property. That we have loaded friends, and hopefully I <coughs> saved it with a smaller F. I don't know what I saved it and why, and we'll see what happens. I can always rename the file if that's the case. Uh, I didn't really think about that when I saved it, actually. But we'll see what happens. And then we have our method here for friends, friends, which is say if a friend, then allocate a friend. So we're going to create um, self components that we're going to allocate for each one of the friends. We only have one. And we're going to add it to the view list. So I'm going to actually copy this here, paste this one in, put it underneath the view did load. And I'm having some good luck here copying and pasting, it looks like. So our friends method. And uh, let me just check something real quick here. Just going to cross check to make sure I've got it. Okay, good. So, friends, friends, good, good, good. Okay, very good. So, we're using the data type friends in the initialization here to say if friends, if we actually created the friend, then friend is equal to friend allocate in it. We're essentially automating the process of creating instances of these objects. Instead of creating all the instances, we're allocating them and in making the instances as we populate the table view with these particular cells, which are going to be instances that were being read from this file up here. And this file up here is the friends.plist file that we're going to load. So we're initializing with this file, and the file is going to take and read our friends in. And on the view did load, Nothing. Um, this is going to be for part two. Um, eh, could leave it out right now. Doesn't really matter. The rest of it. Number of selections in the table view, we need to add that. So let me go through this and then I'll cut and paste it at the end. We've got a little bit of code in the view did load that will be repeated in the next tutorial that it's only needed for uh, what happens when we. Uh, well, we're going to add the save button, which we're not going to, and the edit button. So we're going to add a save button, which we're not going to implement in this one. And we're going to add an, I'll just save that for next time, and then an edit button so we can edit the list of friends. And then we'll, in part three, we'll actually make it so that the view did load actually lo looks for the plist file and then creates the plist file so we don't have to go through that ordeal. Um, there's a couple of, because we are using the protocol for the UI table view, there's a couple of things we need to set automatically. One of them is the number of sections in the table view. So we have one. So we have an index and we have groupings in the table view. So we can add multiple things to each one of the sections. Right now we're just going to have one. So we have number of selections in the table view is going to be equal to one. So we return one number of sections. And return the number of rows in each one of the sections. Well, it's going to return the number of rows that are going to be created, which is going to be all keys that are coming out of the count from the friend dictionary, which is just going to be one as well. So friends dictionary, friends.friends dictionary, all keys count. Well, we only have one. We only put one friend in there. Um, so now in our UI table view, we have the cell for row at indexes, which is when we click on each one of the rows that are in the table view. It's automatically indexed, very similar to an array. So the first one is 0, the next one is 1, 2, 3. And so the NS index path is going to be, we're basically for our table view keeping track of the indexes. And we have a cell identifier that we're going to call cell, which is just going to be a string that we're going to put together to represent each one of the cells. So you got table view cell, it's going to be a DQ reusable cell identifier. Yeah. I'm going to go over this in a lot more detail next time because we're not really going to do anything this, with this yet but eventually what is going to end up happening is when the user clicks we'll put a click event or a click event, a touch control on it so when you 
touch one of the cells, it'll return the cell ID, which is going to be the labeled cell that was clicked on, and then the index value for the location. And then you put together a case switch or an if-else kind of structure that says, if it's zero, then load up number one. If it's one, then load up the second one, which is going to give for each corresponding name, we should see the other two parts of it, the strings for the name, of the, for the telephone number and the email address. Uh, so let's see. So after synthesizing a friend's object, we load the plist from within the table view controllers, and this is from the init with style method. And the friend's object is the lazy initialization. As I was trying to mention before, instead of making instances of all of these, we're doing it kind of in a lazy fashion because we're making it when we need it. So it's allocating a friend, initializing a friend, when it reads from the dictionary. So it's considered a lazy kind of approach. Oh, we do this by overriding the getter method for the friends object. So, because we're overriding it so that we're getting it by creating a new one. So, in the data source uh, delicate method, uh, we're going to make the information from the friends object's dictionary. Number of sections in the table is going to be one, as we set. Number of rows is going to be one, or it's actually going to be equal to the number of keys that are found in the dictionary, which is going to be one, because we only put one item in there. And in this implementation, we can use the keys to uh, populate the cell's title label if we want to, which is what we didn't do, what we could do. Since there's only one key currently in the dictionary, we only have one cell to be populated. So I need to copy in because I didn't do it. I'll just copy over just so that I don't have any cut and paste errors. The information for, it looks like I need to do the viewcontroller.m, which I haven't done. So I'm just going to pull out my viewcontroller.m here. Just take the shortcut method and replace it with the one that's in the sample file that I downloaded. Uh, Vcontroller.m, there it is. Or I guess I could have dragged them, dropped the file in there. But I clicked on it. Oh, because I'm in my friends. It is empty. <laughs> Hold on one second. Oh, should you get another file showing up? I do. Very good. So now if I run it, if I've spelled the file correctly, and if it's lowercase, which I'm not quite sure if it is or not, and I put it in the 6.1, so now my friend should show my friend, which I only had one friend. I don't have any friends because it's really me. <laughs> This is a pathetic application. <laughs> and there I am. Of course, I don't have any friends. So. If I pull this file out, well, actually, right now in part two, it's, ooh, this is interesting. It's highlighted now and it won't unhighlight because it is selected. <laughs> There's no touch control event that's programmed. So it's kind of sort of similar to the way that we did the images. Part two, we're not going to do it tonight. It's too much for one night. But we'll, next week we will implement the touch parts of it, and then I will do a better job going through the indexes and how to put stuff. And then we could possibly um, add, uh, I, have, um, I actually have a tutorial that actually puts images in here as well. So what, we're really, what we really want to do is create and then maybe have a, uh, you know, something where you can select it or deselect it kind of thing. We'll have something to um, save. A little button we'll put up here to save. A little button because we haven't seen the buttons yet on the navigation controllers. So we'll put one here to edit to save. We'll put a title up here. We'll have it so that uh, we can maybe put some images in here. Um, have it so that when we select it, it opens up another view. And it tells us what's in that view. Like it'll show us perhaps the, well, the, the other pieces of information would be nice. Um, so we can actually, you know, add more information to that dictionary if we wanted to, um, which is just one way of storing the information. You don't have to drag and drop the file into, actually, if it was a real application, you couldn't, but because it's a simulator, we can do that this way. But then now you know where to find all the simulator stuff, so you can easily populate out the 
um, picture roll, the video roll, stuff like that. So, because this is empty, this simulator is pretty empty. All it has is what you put in there. So you can definitely expand that. All right, questions on the first part of the Friends View Controller. Don't worry if you don't have it working, because you can always take the solution that should be working <laughs> and use that as a basis to start with part two next week. So now there's no excuses on the first two assignments, actually, for those people who are doing them, because we did the tic-tac-toe tonight, and the first one was the calculator that we did a couple nights ago, so a couple weeks ago. So moving right along, I just want to take a few minutes here to kind of look at the schedule. I believe that the um, those two assignments are due the March 28th? March 31st? Okay, March 31st. I think they're at the end of next month. So the next two assignments, actually let me just take a few minutes here. If you are a, if you're an ITU student and you're doing the assignments, this is, information is for you. Everybody else can tune me out. There's not too many others in here. Uh, see, oops, wrong, wrong section. Uh, assignments. The first two we've uh, covered a tic-tac-toe and the so the next two here are the ones you should actually be working on at this point. Let's see what they are here. Three, four. Number three. Oh, don't want text to you. The clock. Uh, so we've done. We've actually done. These are actually pretty easy. The clock we did. Uh, for those of you who missed it, you can look it up. Actually, we did it in the I. We did it in the Objective C course. We didn't do it in this one. That's why. If you're in both classes, we did it in the earlier one. Oh. Yeah. Um, there's videos on it though. You can watch the video. Uh, but this one is uh, creating a functional clock. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So you're creating a simple functioning clock. This can be an analog clock, or as we've seen today, we can use a date pick. Actually, we can actually put up a digital clock, too. Uh, and I'll let you figure out how to do that with moving arms if you want to. Yeah. Um, you're creating a stopwatch out of it as well. So uh, you're putting up a UI label that's going to represent the clock functionality, and you're going to put that up in a kind of a digital <laughs> format, hours, minutes, and seconds. We actually did this. And then they'll have a stop and a start button. So I'm not going to go through that because some of you have actually done it already. Uh, the next one after this one is the, I think, the improvement on the, the stopwatch. Yeah, it's part two, extending the functionality out and using the date picker. So this is the one from the uh, other class, actually. We looked at the date picker today. So if you thumb through the videos for the Objective-C course, it'll help you with those two. And those two are actually the ones that uh, you might want to be working on if you want to keep up with the. They're actually easier. I no, well, not really. They take a little bit more programming than the first two, actually. So. All right, questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. Oh, I know. I'm going to see you in a few minutes as soon as I end. <laughs> nope. No problem. So, well, I guess this class is going to get out a little bit early today then too as well. So. We're all done for tonight then. I'm going to hang out and help you guys fix problems is what I'm going to do. So stick around if you have problems. Let me stop this video.